Hey YouTube, Fuglefish here. i am recently gotten back into the shooting sports. Um, as everybody knows, our Second Amendment rights are always in jeopardy, and more so within the last few months. So it's rekindled my interest in shooting sports as part of that. I started purchasing firearms again. I got a concealed carry permit, joined the NRA started writing my representatives because I realized how fragile these rights are and how they would love to take them away from us. So one of the guns in front of me right here today is a Ruger 1022. It's been around a long time. I think longer than I've been around, but I never owned one before. I have several other 22 rifles, a Marlin Model 60, a Winchester 1906, Marlin 780, uh, but I never had a 1022. So some friends of mine were purchasing 1022s, and I just happened to walk into my local Walmart. The shelves at Walmart are typically bare of long guns and ammunition, still bare of ammunition mostly. But I happened to look up on the shelf, and they had restocked all their weapons, and I happened to see the distinctive shape of a 1022, and they had several of them. They had the carbine with the red plain wood stock for 229. They had the 1022 all weather carbine for 250. So they got me a uh, all weather carbine out of the back and brought it up front. And here it is. Um, great shooting rifle, a lot of fun. I take this to the range with me. I typically shoot in handguns at 25 yards, so I'll usually bring this with me, throw it up on the bench, and uh, shoot it. Let my son shoot it. It's a lot of fun. 1022 is uh, a learning experience for me since I never owned one before. I'm kind of a noob, but I did a little research, you know, figured out how to take it down, clean it, and all that kind of thing. So, uh, I've done some modifications to it recently. So, we'll go into that in a second. So, it's a lot of fun. Uh, if you can find 22 ammo, I've been pretty successful getting 22 ammo uh, using my vast internet skills, following forum threads using Gunbot. You know, I try to get bricks of 22 at pretty crazy prices. All right, I've paid fifty dollars for a brick because that's all I could find. Um, if, you, if you watch Cabela's, sometimes you can get bricks of name brand, you know, good stuff CCI for uh, less than forty dollars shipped. So I try to keep my 22 ammo in stock because I also bought a Smith and Wesson M&P 22. That's a lot of fun to shoot as well. But that's for another video. So here I am. 10.22 noob, all right. Um, great shooting little rifle. I did do some uh, modifications to it. Uh, first thing I did was get rid of the Ruger stock scope rail because that did not fit Weaver mounted accessories very well, and it also blocked most of the rear iron sight. Um, so that went away. I went on Amazon. And they have quite a few 1022 accessories. And I'm a Prime member, so I get free two day shipping on everything. So that's nice. So I found a UTG uh, Picatinny rail for about $9 shipped. So I got that and some blue Loctite and made it a fine, stable uh, mounting platform. And if you know or don't know, you can mount Weaver style accessories on a Picatinny but not the other way around all right so it's got those nice wide slots and I'm new to Picatinny style rails so it's nice to be able to pop the uh, red dot off take it down clean it put the red dot back on the same slots and have it keep zero that's really nice so I enjoy that so that's what I did I got the uh, UTG rail threw that on there so Loctite it's held up pretty good so far uh, and then I also got a Leapers 30 millimeter uh, red slash green dot uh, 1x no magnification 30 millimeter objective so you know it's got a nice big bright sight picture uh, I was able to sight it in no issues um, and it's great because again I shoot this at 25 yards so I don't really need any magnification uh, eventually I plan on taking this thing hunting so I'll probably put you know at least a four power maybe a three by nine or something on there but uh, I'm an air gun shooter and I use leaper stuff on my air gun scopes and and red dots and such so 
had good experience with them in the past and it's relatively low cost I think that red dot there was 40 bucks okay so about $50 into the optic system on the gun uh, again not that bad all right also uh, on the front of the gun I just added the pro mag barrel band all right hold it up here I don't know if it'll focus but um, it's a billet aluminum barrel band replacing the cheap plastic barrel band that was on there uh, it's also a Picatinny rail system as well it's got a short piece of Picatinny on the bottom and one on the side and also has a um, strap hole on, on the right side the way I have it mounted currently all right and then I also picked up a UTG tactical OP-2 bipod uh, that was about $28 on Amazon um, it's about 8 inches tall so it clears the uh, BX25 no problem all right, so it puts the gun up in there about 8 inches so it's a fairly stable platform uh, can't wait to take it back to the range it's a lot of fun all right, we'll just do a little flyby here of the all-weather carbine uh, better shot of the barrel band so you can see the uh, sling mount short piece of Picatinny rail on the other side and you can see how it mounts down here um, it does mount with a single screw it's an allen head comes with the allen key all right the uh, bipod is very stable uh, seems to be pretty good quality for the money it does extend further I think another three four inches if you needed it to but uh, it's nice I'm sure when I put it up on the bench uh, I'll get some nice tight groups even offhand this thing shoots tight groups really nice really nice all right just a little close-up of the uh, leapers 30 millimeter leaper slash UTG I guess they're the same company uh, single button battery in there. It's got five levels of uh, illumination uh, on both the red and the green side. All right, and you can see the gun's been cleared. Chamber's open and no magazines. All right, um, and then just a close up of the uh, Picatinny rail system. Initially, I had issues with this thing holding on. So I had to redo the screws and redo the uh, blue Loctite on there. Even though the manual says not to use blue Loctite because the holes go all the way into the receiver, all the way through the receiver. If you're careful, you know, turn the gun upside down. Just use a little bit of blue Loctite on the threads. And so far, she's been holding up good. The only time it loosened up on me was when I was taking it down and the uh, pins are really, really tight when the thing's new. So you have to punch those pins out, you know, with a punch and a rubber hammer. So uh, the scope mount did loosen up a little bit, but uh, ever since I retightened it with blue Loctite, not had any issues. I was careful not to over tighten it. I know it's an aluminum receiver. You definitely don't want to go too far past snug because you don't want to strip out those threads. All right, so this is it. This is my uh, first steps in the customizing 1022 rifle. All right, I did. Uh, pick up a BX25 at a local gun show I paid way too much for it but I have these back ordered with Ruger and I have no idea when they're gonna come in all I had was the standard 10 round that came with the, with the rifle I've been to several local gun shops not really that local um, Gander Mountain Bass Pro Cabela's they're completely sold out of Ruger magazines all right, so for now just have the two which is fine yeah, because the uh, range has a six round limit, so I just keep them uploaded to six rounds when I shoot them anyway. So, and the BX25 kind of gets in the way when you're shooting this thing offhand. All right, that's it. This is my uh, 1022 build, the way she sits today. You know, I'm not going to do too much more to it. I think I'm going to do a uh, um, buffer for the uh, recoil pin, take some of that ping out of it. And uh, I might do a aftermarket uh, bolt hold open because you know, everybody knows what a pain in the butt the uh, 
release lever is and the catch to keep the bolt back. Alright, so that's it. This is my 1022. A lot of fun to shoot. Really enjoy it. And uh, glad to be back in shooting sports and uh, support the uh, hobby and, you know, standing up for our Second Amendment rights, which the progressives would love to take away from us. So, be safe. Thanks for watching. Bye. Safety's on. It's my lovely assistant shooting the 1022 with the new bipod. 1X, red dot, target, 50 yards. Remember to squeeze that trigger. I need my glasses. Let's get closer to the scope. My protective glasses, I meant. Oh. That's true. Safety okay. first. All right, we have the safety glass. glasses. Safety. We're good to go. <laughs> All right. All right. That is loaded, so don't okay. put your finger on the trigger until you're ready to shoot. I'm good with that. And just hold your breath and squeeze that trigger. I love those thunderbolts. They make a different sound every time. Keep going until it goes click. Okay. All right, pop the magazine out. That little lever push it forward and it'll drop right in your hand. Just cycle the bolt once, make sure that chamber's clear. Yep. All right. Let's go see how she did. Right, we had a little confusion over where the target was, which target was which. So, gonna shoot another six at 50 yards. Drop the magazine out. Just, just yeah, that bolt doesn't stay open by itself. You have to press a lever. So, all right, safe. Let's go down and take a look. Right, I can't count. I guess I put seven in there, but pretty good job. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So nice. No bullseyes. No bullseyes. <laughs> Not this time. Oh wait, wait. Does that count as a bullseye? Yeah, actually, it does. Okay. Yep. It must be the seventh shot right on the ball. <laughs> so, good job. Time to go home. Sun's going down. Yay. Don't want to get a ticket at the range. No. Shooting after sundown.